Hey folks, this is the fourth in a series of videos that led me to reading the book Descartes' Era by Antonio Damasio. It's a very good book, but it's not a coffee table book. It's a scholarly work designed for a lay audience. Damasio is a neuroscientist, and he is proposing that, in essence, Descartes got it wrong. Cogito ergo sum, I think, therefore I am, should be replaced with another saying that does, Damasio does not say, and this is a gross oversimplification, but he does not say, I feel, therefore I am, that that sort of summarizes his general intent in this book. He is arguing that neurological systems have evolved, and as a result, earlier features of those systems have been used when systems of a higher level have been created. So that initially, you have an organism that just has drives. A drive might essentially be, well, even before drives, the, the neurological system would be responsible for maintaining homeostasis in an organism. That's number one. What happens next would be, you would have something along the lines of some kind of external stimulus, maybe the development of a light detector, and the um, organism would move toward or away from that light. Uh, this would be a drive. Now, there would be no higher level thinking. It would be very mechanistic. But then, as the brain developed further, there would be something called emotions, which Damasio defines as the brain perceiving the physiology, the physiology of the body. So essentially, what would happen is, is that maybe moving toward the light would then be recognized in the brain as being successful. The brain would then send a message to the body that this had been successful, creating a physiological change, and then the body would send a message back to the brain and this would be emotion. Wow, that's pretty intense. He's saying that there's a great interconnection between the body and the brain. And if you take this further, he's saying that emotion, he's defining as different than feelings. Once the higher level functions develop, where a sense of self comes into play, at this point, when the brain begins to recognize those representations of the body in the brain, which are emotions, then feelings emerge. So this is a quite controversial idea here. Now, he supports this uh, in a number of ways by discussing case histories and experiments. And they are very numerous, so I'll just give you a few. I talked earlier in the uh, previous video about a situation by a man who had damage to his frontal lobes. And essentially what happens, I'm sorry, prefrontal cortex. Prefrontal cortex, that's more precise. And essentially what happens here is, is that this is the part of the brain, according to Damasio, that sends a message to the body as a result of awareness at higher level intellectual functions. So, Essentially, you become aware of something, um, good or bad, and then this part sends a message back to the body, which is sent back to the brain, and that results in emotion, which is perceived within the brain, and then it becomes a feeling. So it's a little complicated. But essentially what happens with this uh, person is, this person operates, and there's a number of cases uh, like this, uh, perfectly normally intellectually, passed all the tests that they give, gave this person, but was a complete failure in life. Why? Because they made really bad decisions or they couldn't make a decision. Well, why was this? Well, essentially what Damasio is suggesting is, is that in order for us to make intellectual decisions in life, he's not saying it this way, but it's basically what he's saying, our consciousness is too small. In order to operate in a number of variables, what you need to do is you need to hold those variables in consciousness together over an extended period of time in order to make evaluations. And in real life, 
there are too many variables. So what happens instead is, is that the body evolved, the mind and the nervous system evolved so that the body can store information coming from the brain in, in, in uh, the form of uh, emotional states. And so that the, what the brain can do is say, I recognize certain patterns. Certain things are not so good, not so bad, are, are not so good. Certain things are bad. But these, this information is, is, is too much for consciousness to contain, especially if the information is conveyed over an extended period of time. So what happens is there's a marking system that marks certain stimuli as good or bad, and this brings certain variables to the front, to the fore in consciousness, essentially allowing someone to make better decisions by waiting different ideas, different concepts, different situations, which the conscious mind, being quite limited, is unable to do. And I, I made the analogy of a chess program in the previous video. That's my analogy, not uh, Damasio. But if you were going to create a chess program, you'd probably do it in a less Baroque way than having feedback loops between the, uh, the brain and the body, the body back to the brain, and, and so forth. But he, he puts forth a lot of uh, data to demonstrate this is what's happening. So <clears throat> in order to kind of uh, characterize this a bit more, folks with damage to the prefrontal uh, cortex were put in front of screens and they were asked to look at certain pictures and normals were as two people that had no defect. Uh, and uh, what they was said was, well, we're going to ask you questions about these pictures, so pay attention. And they monitor their galvanic skin response. And what happened is the individuals uh, with uh, the damage uh, were um, aware that certain pictures should uh, elicit an emotional response, but said that uh, they didn't perceive this, they didn't feel this. And what happened was is that there was no notion of this on the... Uh, galvanic skin response either. Um, they took this further. They developed a game which, unlike the other experiments, were able to simulate the problem that these individuals had making decisions. It was a card game that was somewhat complex in which normals would eventually figure out what the right thing to do was. But these other folks who were completely intact intellectually uh, made dumb decisions. And part of the problem was is that the information that was coming at them was coming at them over an extended period of time in little bits and pieces. And the normals were trusting their feelings, which were recording this information, but the folks that didn't have the capacity for the brain to feed back into the body and the body back into the brain, according to Damasio, uh, didn't have uh, this function. And as a result, uh, did some pretty dumb things like not watching part two. Hello, CD listeners. We've come to the point in this album where those listening on cassette or records will have to stand up or sit down and turn over the record or tape. In fairness to those listeners, we'll now take a few seconds before we begin side two. Thank you. <laughs> 